Hello, this is the Truth Seeker 333, and we are continuing our series on the Council of the Gods and the review of the title L within the whole of the Hebrew Scriptures. We left off here at Numbers, and we are beginning on Numbers chapter 24, verse 16, which reads in the King James Version, He hath said, which heard the words of God, and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. The highlighted words are the words of God. In Hebrew, it is pronounced Imbrei El. Imbrei El. And you can see that it's connected by the dash character, which I should be getting into uh, eventually, but not yet. <laughs> uh, but you can see how there is a connective feature to this. A compound of, of words. Um, also in this chapter, the word Shaddai. And uh, again, not El Shaddai, but just Shaddai by itself. So, my comment is also used in this verse is the title Shaddai. So, the quote, words of El, is a reference to Shaddai, okay? And I have the note here, note that in Numbers uh, 24, verse 13, uh, the two references to yud so the phrase, words of God, is a reference to yud So. What I'll do is uh, go ahead and pull up <clears throat> the verse uh, 13 in uh, Blue Letter Bible. Okay, here's 16. And Numbers 24, 13. Let's take a look at the Masoretic text Hebrew. Um, and you can see that uh, within this verse, the term Yudhivave is referenced twice. As you can see, you're noting it by the capitalized L-O-R-D. Uh, but also down here, we can see the, uh, the tetragrammaton here, and we can see it here. Okay. So the verse uh, in 13 says, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord, or actually yud heh to do either good or bad of mine own mind, but what the Lord, that is yud heh saith, that I will speak. So this is basically uh, within three more verses, um, Balaam states, He hath said, which heard the words of God, Imrei El, okay, and knew the knowledge of the Most High. Okay, there we have the, uh, the term Alion, uh, which I've covered quite a bit, and that's right here. Alion. And uh, <clears throat> so that, in a sense, is sort of a, uh, a God word in itself. It's a title, Most High. Again, this is without the L. And then we also see the title Shaddai, which is here. Shaddai. And uh, both of these, uh, including the phrase words of God, are all in reference to yud in verse 13 above. Okay, so moving on. Uh, Numbers uh, chapter 24, verse 23. It states, And he took up his parable and said, Alas, 
Who shall live when God doeth this? And the highlighted phrase is, when God doeth this. In the Hebrew, uh, it is pronounced uh, mismo el. Or actually, it would be more like misu, like misumo, misumo el. Not mis, mismo, but misumo el. Misumo el. So uh, it's translated when God doeth this. And again, my my. My reference here is stating, note, you know, that in verse 13, the two references to Yudhivavhe. So L in this chapter is still in reference to Yudhivavhe. Now in verse, uh, actually we're moving into a new book, Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 24. The text reads, O Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy might? Uh, the phrase highlighted is, What God is there in heaven? And the pronunciation in the Hebrew is Mi'el Bashamayim Mi'el Bashamayim which is what God in the heavens or in heavens or in the heaven it would this is a plural uh, ending so in the heavens is probably more, more, uh, more accurate to state, or within the heavens, or among the heavens. Uh, translation: What God in heaven, or what God in the heavens? Um, heaven and heavens. That's kind of a <clears throat> one of those words that's uh, when you think of the heaven. Um, you think of the stars in the sky and the and the expanse of of the heavens, you know. So heaven and heavens is kind of uh, one of those words that is similar to like in English the word sheep, like uh, sheep can be a, a singular word. But it can also be a plural word, um, and Shemaim is is heavens, or it can be understood as the heaven, or in heaven, or the heavens. So that that's interesting. Uh, but this is a the word L in here is referring to a lowercase God, G O D. Uh, in other words. What foreign god or what other god? Um, because in the context of the verse, it is clear uh, that there is a comparison between Lord God and what God is there in heaven that can do according to thy works. So in the King James, they do capitalize G-O-D, but... I would say you could probably put a lowercase g there as well. Um, and uh, my, my comment in the note here is uh, the reference is clearly to a god. Okay. Now also note the use um, in the first part of the verse, Lord God is is uh, transliterated Adonai Yudhe Vavhe. Okay. 
Uh, I find that very interesting, and I'll tell you why in a second. But let's pull it up in um, Blue Letter Bible and uh, look at the uh, the Hebrew. Now here uh, we have Adonai, and then Yudhivavhe. Adonai Yudhivavhe, and English we are translating O Lord God. Okay. Uh, remember I talk about the E ending with the Yod and when we were saying Elohai or Elohei Yisrael and we, we have this E ending again here on Adonai, you know, Adonai. Um, so we see that same kind of possessiveness, which is why um, Adonai can mean my Lord, you know, so this could be translated, my Lord, uh, Yudhe Vavhe. Uh, you'll note that the, uh, the Yudhe Vavhe is uh, translated here as God and not Lord because of the, the, the word pr prior to it you know, essentially meaning Lord, which is Adonai. And uh, Adon is Lord, and then Adonai is, is, can be understood as my Lord. And so in the English, we're translating it, Oh, Lord God. Um, we could translate this, My Lord Yudhivavhe. Okay. Um, but you'll note that in the King James, they capitalize the word, the full letters of the word God, uh, denoting that this is not a reference to <clears throat> one of the other God words, such as Elohim or Hel Elohei or El. Um, but when there is all capitals, uh, it is signifying the Tetragrammaton. Uh, so... I find that very interesting because in the Orthodox Jewish tradition uh, and the conservative, uh, every time you see the Tetragrammaton as you're reading the text of the Hebrew Bible, instead of uh, pronouncing the name, uh, you speak Adonai. Adonai. So uh, this is very interesting because you know, it's preceded by the word Adonai. And then, you know, if you were to say this, I wonder how they would pronounce this particular passage in, in an Orthodox um, synagogue. Probably Adonai, Adonai, <laughs> you know, <laughs> two times in a row. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you that and um, talk a little bit about Adonai in the Hebrew. And uh, <clears throat> so, so clearly uh, in that verse, uh, the L occurrence is referring to a God. Now we move on to the next verse, which is Deuteronomy uh, chapter 4, verse 24, which reads, For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire even a jealous God. The highlighted text is a jealous God. And uh, the Hebrew is pronounced El Kana. And it means a jealous God. Uh, but you'll note that El becomes, comes before the word Kana. So you could understand this as God of jealousy. I suppose you could you, you could understand that, but in translating it to English, it flows better when we say uh, a jealous God. Um, but it could it's not going to lose its meaning if you say uh, El, uh, God of jealousy. Um, and so the compound uh, of the title here is Kana. And the other God words in this verse are the Tetragrammaton 
and the word Elohecha. And uh, so we'll take a look at that real quick. I just want to take a look at the Elohecha. Um, so the Hebrew is Ki uh, Adonai, which is, again, that's the Tetragrammaton. When you're pronouncing it in a conservative Jewish manner, you're going to pronounce Adonai. So Ki Adonai uh, Elohecha. 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 So uh, Elohei is God. And remember the possessive of the E, uh, which I'm still trying to figure out. But the Yod uh, is, is uh, still there. And the, the uh, ending with the uh, Chaf Sofit is Cha with the Kametz uh, vowel ending. Um, which signifies you or your, so, or thy, so, or you could say for, uh, for Adonai, your God, you know, uh, they say here in the King James for the, for the Lord, thy God. Now, um, the other thing I want to point out is the word the, which is not in the text, for the Lord, you'll note that it, that it starts with ki, which is for, or it can also mean because. Um, but there is no word for the in there. It just says ki, yudhivavhe, elochecha. So in other words, the name is simply without a the, okay? So you can drop the the and you can just say ki yudhivavhe elohecha. Um, I'm trying to get you to understand the flavor of how that works, but um, clearly this verse, uh, when it when it says El Kana, the title El Kana is in reference to Adonai. Elohecha. Okay. So, moving on. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 31 reads For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. The highlighted text is uh, merciful God or a merciful God, I guess. And the pronunciation in the Hebrew is El Rahum. El Rahum. Uh, which, again, the L is preceding the the title or the description of the title. So you could say God of mercy. Um, but in English, we're translating merciful God, a merciful God. And again, we see the repetition of the God words, uh, the name, Yudhevave and the other, the other title, Elohecha, your God. And uh, just out of curiosity, again, let me take a look at the, uh, the use, because we're seeing the same pattern throughout this, this section of Scripture. Now we see Ki El Rahum. No, so, so, so prior we saw uh, Ki Adonai. Elohecha. Now we're seeing 
ki el rachum Adonai Elohecha. <laughs> okay, so that's just like adding even, you know, adding another layer, you know, uh, for uh, a God of mercy, uh, Yudhe Vavhe uh, is your God. Um, so uh, you can see how El Rachum um, is in reference to uh, Yudhe Vavhe uh, in this verse. And uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 5, verse 9, um, it says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Again, uh, the highlighted text is a jealous God, and the Hebrew is pronounced el Kana. el Kana, And it is a jealous God, and, and again, <laughs> we see those, those same God words. Yerevavhe and Elochecha. The compound here is Kana. Uh, El is definitely in reference to God. Uh, let's pull the uh, verse up and look at it in, uh, in the text again. So we see here, let's see. There we, there we have it again. So this time we're seeing Ki... Ado uh, ki anoki ki anoki okay because this is I the Lord so uh, anoki is I uh, is a is a is in reference to Yudhe so this is why they translate for I and then it, then they say the Lord but it's actually you can drop the the it's for I Yudhe thy God Elohecha uh, El Kana which is El uh, which is I'm a God of jealousy or I'm a jealous God Okay. Okay, let's uh, take a look at our time real quick. See how much more time I have on the schedule. Okay. So, uh, moving on to Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse nine. It reads, "Know therefore that the Lord thy God." He is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousandth generations. Okay. And the highlighted text is the faithful God. And we have another occurrence of the Ha'el grouping and this is uh, Ha'el Hane'eman Ha'el Hane'eman okay translated the faithful God uh, other words other God words in this verse are Yudhevavhe Elohecha and Ha Elohim. So now we see the occurrence there with the Ha in front of Elohim. And uh, the compound in this verse is uh, Ne'eman. Uh, but in this case, they're preceding it by the Ha as well. So it's Ha ne, Ne'eman. And the translation is usually 
God with, you know, exclamation point or the God. But again, when we're using the definite article, ha, uh, it's more than just the word the, okay? It's denoting a specific God. In other words, this is the God. This is the God, okay? <laughs> ha el, okay? Uh, very significant, very significant. Ha el ha neman. You know, this is not just um, any faithful, uh, anyone who is faithful. It's the faithful one, you know. Ha neman, the faithful one, you know. The God, the faithful one. You know, this is the one who is faithful. This is the, the meaning conveyed is, this is the, the one who is faithful, you know. The, the connotation, you know, is that no others are faithful. He is faithful, you know. Um, and my note in here in the comment is, uh, note the use of uh, ki yudhevavhe uh, elohecha huhala elohim, um, that Yudhivavhe, your God, he is Elohim, <laughs> the faithful El. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's a lot of uh, God words going on in this verse here. So let's take a look at it in the Masoretic text. And uh, okay, so here we say, Ki Adonai, and you'll note the... Uh, the hyphen or the dash connecting the the key and the Adonai. Again, I've said this is a um, a notation regarding emphasis, um, which was made by the Masoretes. So we'll get into that, and I keep saying we're going to get into that. And I know I have a note on that. Um, I have a note on that. Um, definitely coming up. I just don't remember where it was. But uh, this text here, Ki Adonai Elohecha Hu Ha Elohim. Here it is right here. Ha Elohim. Ha El. Ha Neeman. You know. Um, you know. So the God who is the faithful one, the faithful one. Note the ha, um, the, the repetition of the ha. Uh, ha Elohim, ha El, ha Neiman. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's making everything synonymous. Um, it's making everything synonymous uh, with each of the others. And of course, this is all in reference to Yudhivave, you know, for Yudhivave, uh, thy God, Elohecha, uh, who is um, God, who uh, Ha Elohim, you know. Okay, that's a really good verse. So, uh, anyway, um, let's go back. And we're going to verse 21 of chapter 7 of Deuteronomy. And chapter 7, verse 21 of Deuteronomy. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. So... Uh, the Hebrew reads El Gadol Venorah. El Gadol Venorah. It's translated a mighty God and terrible, or a mighty and terrible God. Um, God words again Yudhevavhe, Elohecha. The compound in the L is uh, Gadol, which is mighty. Uh, L is definitely in reference to God with a capital G. And I have in my comments, note the use of Ki Yirhevahe Elohecha. 
uh, it keeps occurring over and over again. And we'll take a quick look at this one, uh, and then we'll finish up this video. Uh, let's take a look at the Hebrew. Uh, we see the ki, uh, Adonai, or, you know, yud heh uh, Elochecha. You know, it just that, that phrase throughout this section here uh, keeps, keeps uh, repeating itself. Ki, Adonai, Elochecha. Um, and then, uh, and this is Bekir Becha and El Gadol. So here's El Gadol. And uh, so that's, uh, the, the word before that is, uh, among, it, its meaning is among you. Um, down here you can see the uh, Strong's Concordance for that, Kereb. So Be, uh, be is in or within. Uh, Kereb Kha, it's a, the Kha ending is you. And the Kereb, uh, kereb is uh, among, so within, among you. Uh, God of might or God, mighty God. So uh, with that, uh, we're finishing up uh, this video and uh, we will continue in the next one. Keep seeking truth. Uh, God be with you all. Amen.